Welcome to Gospel Truth with Andrew Womack, celebrating 50 years of sharing God's unconditional love and grace. Welcome to the Gospel Truth broadcast. Welcome to a very special edition of the Gospel Truth. Don't limit God. He wants you to have an abundant life. God isn't angry at us anymore. The war is over. And I know that there's many of you who love God, but I tell you, there's a better way to pray. Everything that Jesus came to do, the power for it is released through the gospel, the good news, the nearly too good to be true news. Welcome to our Wednesday's broadcast of the Gospel Truth. This week, I am continuing to teach on a series that I started just last Monday uh, on uh, The War is Over. You know, once again, let me just mention, I mentioned this on Monday's broadcast, but we are in our brand new studio in Woodland Park. It's not even fixed up yet. This is just a temporary set. This is only a little portion of our set, but praise God, we are in this building. It's been a year and a half that we have been in the process of moving up here. Did a $2.2 million renovation on this. And now, if you include this building and the uh, property that we got along with our original 157 acres that we had for our Caris Bible College, we now have a total of 493 acres here. And uh, it is phenomenal what God is doing. We are building a Bible college that I believe is second to none. And of course, the buildings are just a tool. The main thing is we are seeing people's lives changed. And I want to say a special thank you to all of the people who gave to make this possible. You know, we have a little site outside of this building that has an angel that was given to me by one of my graduating classes of Karis Bible College. And we moved it up here and put it on a pedestal. And then behind it, we have listed the names of all of the people that we call our elite partners who gave to en enable us to purchase this property and renovate it. And uh, I just want to say a public thank you to you and of course to God for inspiring you and enabling you and enabling us to accomplish what God has uh, led us to do. So it's been awesome. And I started teaching on Monday from Luke chapter 2, verse 14, where the angels were singing glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill towards men. And you know, at this Christmas season, there are a lot of people that you'll be hearing people talk about that we need to love each other, that there should be peace. Jesus came to bring peace. And they interpret it as if this is peace among men, between men. But actually, it's talking about peace from God towards men. There was a war that had been declared by God against our sin. And that when Jesus came, Jesus paid the price that we had to pay. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Jesus paid our wage. He died for my sin and for your sin. And He satisfied the wrath and the anger of God. God's wrath against you and me has been appeased, and there is no more war between God and man. The war is over. That's what this book is about. That's what I'm teaching on. And this is what these angels were singing about, the war. God's wrath against mankind is over. Sad to say, there are many Christians today who don't know that the war is over. They think that God is still holding sins against them, imputing sins unto them, and they are living under the... They feel the displeasure of God. They feel the wrath and the anger of God. I've heard many, many, many people get up and talk about that God was angry at them. And I'll be using these verses uh, sometime, maybe this week or the first part of next week. But over in Isaiah chapter 54, it says God would never be angry with us or rebuke us ever again, that there is a covenant of peace and His peace will never be removed from us once we accept what Jesus has done. That is the treaty that we have, the post-war treaty. It, the war is over, but the sad fact is most Christians don't know it. Yesterday I was using these verses in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new, and all things are of God, who hath 
RECONCILED US TO HIMSELF BY JESUS CHRIST AND HATH GIVEN TO US THE MINISTRY OF RECONCILIATION. TO WIT, IN THE OLD ENGLISH HERE, THAT JUST MEANS THAT IS, OR TO KNOW THAT GOD WAS IN CHRIST RECONCILING THE WORLD UNTO HIMSELF. NOW, YOU KNOW, I I MENTIONED THIS ON YESTERDAY'S BROADCAST, BUT THE WORD RECONCILE MEANS TO BRING INTO HARMONY OR TO BRING INTO AGREEMENT. LIKE WHEN YOU RECONCILE YOUR BANK STATEMENT WITH YOUR RECORDS, WHEN YOU TUNE A GUITAR AND YOU RECONCILE THOSE STRINGS, YOU BRING THEM INTO HARMONY, WE HAVE NOW BEEN BROUGHT INTO HARMONY. THERE IS NO DISCORD BETWEEN US AND GOD. THERE IS NO DISAGREEMENT BETWEEN US AND GOD. AND DID YOU KNOW THAT THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN JUST, OH, NO, GOD IS CONSTANTLY DISPLEASED WITH ME. HE IS NOT. AND THE KEY TO THIS IS UNDERSTANDING. JOHN 4, 24 SAYS THAT GOD IS A SPIRIT AND THOSE WHO WORSHIP HIM. AND AGAIN, WORSHIP IS A WORD THAT WE USE IN A RELIGIOUS SENSE, BUT THIS IS TALKING ABOUT THOSE WHO CONNECT WITH GOD, THOSE WHO HAVE RELATIONSHIP WITH GOD, THOSE WHO HAVE FELLOWSHIP WITH GOD. WHEN WE WORSHIP HIM, WE MUST WORSHIP HIM IN SPIRIT AND IN TRUTH. GOD IS A SPIRIT. GOD IS LOOKING AT YOU IN THE SPIRIT. AND IF YOU ARE IN CHRIST JESUS, VERSE 17, OLD THINGS HAVE PASSED AWAY. ALL THINGS HAVE BECOME NEW. YOU NOW HAVE A BRAND NEW SPIRIT, AND THAT SPIRIT HAS BEEN CLEANSED OF ALL SIN. THERE IS NO IMPURITY IN IT. AND WHEN YOU ACCEPT JESUS AS LORD, YOU BECOME A NEW PERSON. YOU GET THIS NEW SPIRIT, AND THEN YOU'RE SEALED BY THE HOLY SPIRIT, EPHESIANS 1, 13, SO THAT WHEN A CHRISTIAN SINS, THAT SIN ENTERS INTO YOUR PHYSICAL BODY, AND IT MAY GIVE SATAN AN INROAD TO COME AGAINST YOU IN THE PHYSICAL REALM WITH SICKNESS AND THINGS LIKE THAT. IT ENTERS INTO YOUR SOULISH REALM. IT CAN DEFILE YOUR CONSCIENCE. IT CAN AFFECT YOUR uh, EMOTIONS, YOUR MOOD. YOU CAN LIVE UNDER DEPRESSION AND FEAR WHEN THE TRUTH IS THAT GOD LOVES YOU. BUT GOD IS A SPIRIT, AND GOD IS LOOKING AT YOU IN THE SPIRIT. AND IN THE SPIRIT, YOU ARE RIGHTEOUS AND TRULY HOLY. EPHESIANS CHAPTER 4, VERSE 24, AND THERE IS NO SIN IN YOUR SPIRIT. YOUR SPIRIT DOESN'T GET CONTAMINATED AFTER YOU GET BORN AGAIN. IT'S SEALED, AND NO CONTAMINATION ENTERS IN THERE. AND SINCE GOD IS A SPIRIT, HE'S LOOKING AT YOU IN THE SPIRIT, AND GOD HAS BEEN RECONCILED UNTO YOU. THERE IS NO DISAGREEMENT. HE IS FRIENDLY TOWARDS YOU. HE'S IN HARMONY WITH YOUR BORN-AGAIN SPIRIT. MAN, THAT'S AWESOME. SO BACK IN VERSE 19, GOD WAS IN CHRIST RECONCILING THE WORLD UNTO HIMSELF, NOT IMPUTING THEIR TRESPASSES UNTO THEM, AND HATH COMMITTED UNTO US THE WORD OF RECONCILIATION. WHEN IT SAYS THAT GOD HASN'T IMPUTED OUR TRESPASSES UNTO US, THIS WORD IMPUTE IS AN ACCOUNTING TERM. AND IT LITERALLY MEANS TO RECORD OR TO PUT ON THE BOOKS. YOU KNOW, BACK, uh, YOU KNOW, A GENERATION OR TWO AGO, PEOPLE WOULD GO TO A GROCERY STORE OR A LUMBER STORE, AND THEY WOULD HAVE A TAB OR AN ACCOUNT, AND THEY WOULD BUY SOMETHING, AND THEY SAID, PUT IT ON MY TAB. AND SO THEY WOULD IMPUTE IT UNTO THEM. THEY WOULD RECORD IT. AND THEN AT THE END OF THE MONTH OR WHATEVER PERIOD OF TIME, THEY WOULD HAVE TO PAY THAT TAB. THEY WOULD HAVE TO PAY FOR IT. TODAY, THE WAY WE DO THIS IS THROUGH A CREDIT CARD. YOU GO AND YOU BUY SOMETHING AND YOU GIVE THEM YOUR CREDIT CARD. AND WHEN YOU GIVE THEM THE CREDIT CARD, YOU DID NOT PAY FOR IT. ALL YOU DID WAS GIVE THEM INFORMATION ON THAT LITTLE METALLIC STRIP. IT HAS INFORMATION ABOUT YOU, AND IT WAS IMPUTED UNTO YOU. AND THEN YOUR CREDIT CARD COMPANY WILL TAKE THAT BILL, AND THEN THEY WILL SEND YOU A BILL. AND IF YOU SAY TO THE CREDIT CARD COMPANY, OH, I'VE ALREADY PAID FOR IT. I GAVE THEM MY CREDIT CARD. NO, YOU DIDN'T PAY FOR IT. AND YOU CAN PROVE THAT BECAUSE DON'T PAY YOUR CREDIT CARD BILL WHEN IT COMES AND TELL THEM YOU ALREADY GAVE IT TO THE MERCHANT. YOU ALREADY HAVE PAID FOR IT. NO, YOU JUST HAD IT IMPUTED UNTO YOU. YOU HAVE TO PAY THAT CREDIT CARD BILL WHEN IT COMES. THIS IS WHAT IT'S SAYING HERE, THAT GOD DID NOT IMPUTE SIN UNTO US THROUGH JESUS. NOW, IN THE OLD COVENANT, SIN WAS IMPUTED UNTO MAN, AND I'M GOING TO BE EXPLAINING THIS IN MORE DETAIL. BUT PRIOR TO JESUS COMING, GOD HELD PEOPLE'S SINS AGAINST THEM. 
THE OLD TESTAMENT LAW ACTUALLY MADE SIN COME ALIVE. THE OLD TESTAMENT LAW GAVE SIN DOMINION OVER US. THE OLD TESTAMENT LAW RELEASED GOD'S WRATH AND PUNISHMENT AGAINST SIN. AND I'LL BE EXPLAINING THIS IN MORE DETAIL. THERE WAS A REASON FOR THAT. THAT WASN'T GOD'S FIRST WAY OF DEALING WITH MANKIND. FOR THE FIRST 2,000 YEARS AFTER THE TRANSGRESSION OF ADAM AND EVE, GOD DID NOT IMPUTE MAN'S SINS UNTO THEM. ROMANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 13 SAYS THAT. AND I'LL BE DEALING WITH THIS IN MORE DETAIL. BUT WHEN THE LAW CAME, GOD BEGAN TO IMPUTE MAN'S SINS UNTO HIM. THE LAW WAS GOD'S WRATH REVEALED AGAINST US. IT WASN'T A BLESSING IN THE SENSE THAT GOD GAVE IT TO SET US FREE FROM SIN. BUT THE LAW ACTUALLY MADE SIN COME ALIVE ON THE INSIDE OF US, AND WE DIED. ROMANS CHAPTER 7 SAYS THAT. AND SO THE LAW ACTUALLY MADE OUR SIN WORSE AND IT RELEASED THE WRATH OF GOD. THERE WAS WAR FROM GOD TOWARDS MEN BECAUSE OF OUR SIN. AND GOD USED THIS TO BASICALLY JUST SCARE PEOPLE OUT OF HELL, TO SHOW THEM THE WRATH AND THE PUNISHMENT AGAINST OUR SIN. AND THE PURPOSE OF IT WAS TO MAKE PEOPLE TURN FROM THEIR OWN SELF-RIGHTEOUSNESS AND QUIT TRYING TO EARN THE BLESSING OF GOD. THE LAW RAISED THE STANDARD OF WHAT GOD DEMANDED TO SUCH A HEIGHT THAT NOBODY COULD EVER KEEP IT. AND IT MADE US DESPAIR OF SELF-SALVATION. BUT EVEN THOUGH THAT WAS GOOD AND IT DROVE US TOWARDS GOD, THERE WERE NEGATIVE EFFECTS OF IT, AND THAT IS THAT IT ALSO BROUGHT CONDEMNATION AND IT MADE US FEEL SO SEPARATED FROM GOD. YOU KNOW, IT'S LIKE THESE COMMERCIALS THAT THEY HAVE ON TELEVISION WHERE THEY SAY, TAKE THIS PILL FOR YOUR HEADACHE, BUT THEN THEY GIVE THE SIDE EFFECTS AND IT COULD CAUSE uh, DEATH, IT COULD CAUSE HEART ATTACK, IT COULD CAUSE THIS PROBLEM, THAT PROBLEM. And I MEAN, THE SIDE EFFECTS TO IT ARE TERRIBLE. THERE WERE SIDE EFFECTS TO THE LAW. THE PURPOSE OF THE LAW WAS TO MAKE YOU SO CONDEMNED THAT YOU JUST DESPAIRED OF SELF-SALVATION AND YOU CRIED OUT TO MERCY, AND THAT WAS GOOD. BUT THE SIDE EFFECTS OF IT WERE THAT YOU FELT SO CONDEMNED AND SEPARATED FROM GOD THAT YOU RAN FROM GOD INSTEAD OF TO GOD. THAT'S WHAT ADAM AND EVE DID WHEN THEY FIRST SINNED. INSTEAD OF RUNNING TO GOD, THEY HID THEMSELVES. THEY WERE ASHAMED. THEY HAD FEAR, AND THEY RAN FROM GOD. AND GOD NEVER WANTED TO IMPUTE OUR SINS UNTO US. BUT BECAUSE OF OUR OWN uh, CONSCIENCE, YOU KNOW, I JUST TAUGHT ON THIS ON TELEVISION NOT LONG AGO ABOUT WHO TOLD YOU THAT YOU WERE NAKED. OUR OWN CONSCIENCE WAS CONDEMNING US AND DRIVING US FROM GOD. AND OUR CONSCIENCE WASN'T A PERFECT GUIDE BECAUSE IT COULD BE SKEWED, IT COULD BE DEFILED, IT COULD BE SEVERED, SEARED WITH A HOT IRON. AND SO BECAUSE OF THAT, uh, GOD HAD TO GIVE THE LAW TO BRING PEOPLE BACK TO A PROPER STANDARD OF RIGHT AND WRONG AND IT ACCOMPLISHED SOME GOOD THINGS, BUT IT ALSO HAD THIS NEGATIVE SIDE EFFECT OF MAKING US JUST LIVE IN CONSTANT CONDEMNATION. AND YET IN THE NEW TESTAMENT, THROUGH JESUS, GOD, THE WAR IS OVER. JESUS PAID OUR PRICE. IN ROMANS CHAPTER 8, VERSE 1, THERE IS THEREFORE NOW NO CONDEMNATION TO THEM WHO ARE IN CHRIST JESUS, WHO WALK NOT AFTER THE FLESH, BUT AFTER THE SPIRIT. FOR THE LAW OF THE SPIRIT OF LIFE IN CHRIST JESUS HATH MADE ME FREE, SET ME FREE FROM THE LAW OF SIN AND DEATH. FOR WHAT THE LAW COULD NOT DO IN THAT IT WAS WEAK THROUGH THE FLESH, GOD SENDING HIS OWN SON IN THE LIKENESS OF SINFUL FLESH AND FOR SIN, CONDEMNED SIN IN THE FLESH, THAT'S TALKING ABOUT IN THE FLESH OF JESUS, THAT THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF THE LAW MIGHT BE FULFILLED IN US WHO WALK NOT AFTER THE FLESH, BUT AFTER THE SPIRIT. GOD JUDGED SIN IN THE FLESH OF HIS OWN SON, JESUS, SO THAT THERE IS NOW NO CONDEMNATION TO US. AND YET THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN IS LIVING A LIFE OF CONDEMNATION. AGAIN, THE WORD CONDEMNATION IS KIND OF A RELIGIOUS TERM THAT WE DON'T USE A LOT, BUT THE WORD CONDEMN, LIKE FOR INSTANCE IN THE UNITED STATES, IF A BUILDING BECOMES UNFIT FOR USE, IF IT'S NOT STRUCTURALLY SOUND OR IF THE uh, ELECTRICAL IS BAD OR SOMETHING, THE GOVERNMENT WILL COME IN AND CONDEMN THAT, AND THEY SAY THAT IT'S NOT FIT FOR USE. THAT IS KIND OF A LAYMAN'S DEFINITION OF WHAT THE WORD CONDEMNATION MEANS. AND THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN, THEY MAY BELIEVE THAT THEY'RE FORGIVEN, THEY MAY BELIEVE THAT WHEN THEY DIE, THEY ARE GOING TO GO TO HEAVEN, BUT THEY FEEL UNFIT FOR USE. YOU KNOW, I CAN ILLUSTRATE THIS BECAUSE uh, PEOPLE HAVE HEARD ME TALK ABOUT MY SON WAS RAISED FROM THE DEAD. I'VE SEEN MULTIPLE PEOPLE RAISED FROM THE DEAD. 
AND THERE'S A LOT OF CHRISTIANS WHO BELIEVE GOD CAN DO THAT. THEY COME TO MY MEETINGS, AND IF SOMEBODY WAS TO FALL OVER DEAD, AND I SAY, WELL, I'VE SEEN PEOPLE RAISED FROM THE DEAD. I BELIEVE GOD RAISES PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD. HOW MANY OF YOU BELIEVE THAT? MOST CHRISTIANS who are, ARE... NOT MOST CHRISTIANS, BUT MOST OF THE CHRISTIANS WHO COME TO MY MEETINGS, THEY AREN'T YOUR NOD TO GOD CROWD. THEY'RE THE FANATICS. AND SO MOST OF THE PEOPLE THAT COME TO MY MEETINGS WOULD RAISE THEIR HAND AND YES, HEY, MAN, I BELIEVE THAT GOD RAISES PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD TODAY. AND I SAID, I BELIEVE I'M GOING TO PRAY AND WE'RE GOING TO SEE THIS PERSON RAISED FROM THE DEAD. AND I GUARANTEE YOU, MANY, MANY CHRISTIANS WOULD JUST, AMEN, GO FOR IT. THEY'D GET UP CLOSE. THEY'D WANT TO SEE THIS. THEY ARE ALL IN. THEY ARE ALL EXCITED. THEY GOT GREAT FAITH FOR IT. BUT THE MOMENT I SAY, ALL RIGHT, IF YOU BELIEVE IT, YOU COME PRAY FOR THIS PERSON. ALL OF A SUDDEN, THEIR EXCITEMENT TURNS TO FEAR. THEIR FAITH TURNS TO UNBELIEF. WHAT HAPPENED? DID THEY BELIEVE THAT GOD ALL OF A SUDDEN QUIT RAISING PEOPLE FROM THE DEAD? DID THEY BELIEVE THAT THOSE THINGS PASSED AWAY? NO, THEY BELIEVE THAT GOD HAS THE POWER, BUT WHEN I SAY YOU COME PRAY FOR THEM, THEY DON'T HAVE CONFIDENCE BECAUSE THEIR HEART IS CONSTANTLY CONDEMNING THEM. THEY BELIEVE THAT GOD IS STILL IMPUTING SIN UNTO THEM. AND THEY BELIEVE THAT SOMETIMES A MINISTER, YOU KNOW, SOMEBODY IS JUST CLOSER TO GOD AND GOD WILL ANSWER MY PRAYERS, BUT YOU DON'T HAVE THAT SAME CONFIDENCE THAT GOD IS GOING TO ANSWER YOUR PRAYERS. THAT'S ONLY BECAUSE YOU KNOW YOU BETTER THAN YOU KNOW ME. IF YOU KNEW ME AS WELL AS YOU KNOW YOU, YOU WOULDN'T HAVE ANY MORE FAITH IN MY PRAYERS THAN YOU GOT IN YOUR PRAYERS. GOD DOESN'T ANSWER MY PRAYERS BECAUSE I DESERVE IT. I DON'T DESERVE IT. BUT SEE, THE WAR IS OVER. GOD PLACED HIS WRATH upon, uh, FOR MY SIN AND YOUR SIN UPON HIS SON. AND THE ONLY DIFFERENCE IS THAT I AM RENEWING MY MIND AND LEARNING TO BELIEVE AND TRUST IN THE FACT THAT MY SINS ARE PAID FOR AND GOD IS NOT GOING TO ANSWER MY PRAYERS BASED ON MY GOODNESS OR MY HOLINESS. HE ANSWERS MY PRAYERS BASED ON WHAT JESUS HAS DONE AND I HAVE PUT FAITH IN JESUS. IF YOU TRULY UNDERSTOOD THAT, WELL, THEN IT DOESN'T MATTER WHETHER YOU HAVE DONE RIGHT OR WRONG. THE WAR IS OVER. GOD IS NOT IMPUTING, HOLDING SINS, RECORDING SINS AGAINST YOU. IN GOD'S EYES, YOU ARE SINLESS. YOU ARE PERFECT. YOUR SPIRIT HAS NOW BEEN RECONCILED UNTO GOD. AND GOING BACK TO THIS VERSE THAT GOD WAS IN CHRIST RECONCILING THE WORLD UNTO HIMSELF, AND HERE'S HOW HE RECONCILED US, MADE US FRIENDLY, BROUGHT US BACK INTO HARMONY WITH GOD, IS HE DID NOT uh, IMPUTE OUR TRESPASSES UNTO THEM. BUT INSTEAD, HE IMPUTED MY TRESPASSES UNTO JESUS. GOING BACK TO THIS EXAMPLE OF A CREDIT CARD, IF I WENT UP TO PAY FOR SOMETHING AND I WAS GOING TO PUT MY CREDIT CARD DOWN, BUT YOU KNOW, JESUS WALKS UP AND SAYS, HERE, PUT IT ON MY ACCOUNT, AND HE HANDS THEM HIS CARD. DID YOU KNOW, IF JESUS PAID FOR WHAT I WAS BUYING, THEN IF I WAS TO GET A BILL IN THE MAIL, AND THEY SAID, WELL, I KNOW THAT THIS OTHER PERSON PAID FOR WHAT YOU'VE GOT, BUT YOU GOT IT. YOU NEED TO PAY SOMETHING. IT'S ONLY RIGHT. IT'S WRONG FOR THEM TO PAY FOR THE WHOLE THING, AND THEY DIDN'T GET ANY OF THE BENEFIT OF IT. YOU'RE THE ONE WHO BOUGHT THIS PRODUCT. YOU SHOULD PAY SOMETHING, AND SO THEY WANT ME TO PAY 50% OF THE BILL. I'D BE JUST PLAIN STUPID IF I DID THAT, BECAUSE, NO, IT'S ALREADY BEEN PAID FOR. WHY SHOULD I HAVE TO PAY ANYTHING? WELL, LIKEWISE, JESUS PAID FOR MY SIN AND YOUR SIN, AND YET THE AVERAGE CHRISTIAN FEELS LIKE THAT I STILL HAVE TO GO AROUND SAYING, OH, GOD, I'M JUST A SINNER SAVED BY GRACE. OH, GOD, I'M SO UNWORTHY. WELL, YES, IT'S TRUE THAT YOU ARE UNWORTHY, BUT YOU SHOULDN'T HAVE TO BEAR THAT SIN. JESUS IS NOT IMPUTING SIN UNTO YOU. GOD THE FATHER IMPUTED YOUR SIN UNTO JESUS, PUT IT ON HIS ACCOUNT. JESUS SUFFERED SEPARATION FROM GOD FOR YOU AND ME. HE SAID, MY GOD, MY GOD, WHY HAVE YOU FORSAKEN ME? THAT'S A QUOTATION FROM JESUS ON THE CROSS. AND THAT IS ACTUALLY JESUS QUOTING FROM PSALMS CHAPTER 22. THAT'S A DIRECT QUOTE. MY GOD, MY GOD, WHY HAVE YOU FORSAKEN ME? BUT THEN THE NEXT VERSE SAYS, BUT YOU ARE HOLY, O GOD, THAT INHABITS THE PRAISES OF ISRAEL. YOU KNOW WHY GOD FORSOOK JESUS? BECAUSE HE WAS HOLY AND JESUS BECAME SIN FOR US. THAT'S RIGHT HERE IN 2 CORINTHIANS CHAPTER 5, VERSE 21. IT SAYS, FOR HE HATH MADE HIM, GOD THE FATHER, MADE HIM, JESUS, TO BE SIN FOR US WHO KNEW NO SIN, THAT WE MIGHT BE MADE THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD IN HIM. 
GOD MADE HIS SON, JESUS, BECOME SIN FOR US. AND THAT'S THE REASON THAT GOD FORSOOK JESUS, BECAUSE THERE IS A PAYMENT TO SIN. ROMANS 6, 23, THE WAGES OF SIN IS DEATH, SEPARATION FROM GOD. AND GOD HAD TO SEPARATE HIMSELF FROM JESUS AND TURN AWAY BECAUSE JESUS DIDN'T JUST BECOME SIN IN PRINCIPLE. HE DIDN'T JUST TASTE A LITTLE BIT OF SIN FOR US. JESUS BECAME SIN FOR US. OUR SIN, EVERY VILE THING THAT THE HUMAN RACE HAS DONE, NOT ONLY JUST EVERY INDIVIDUAL SIN, BUT EVERY PERSON'S SIN, ALL ENTERED INTO THE BODY OF JESUS. HE BECAME TOTALLY DEFILED AND SINFUL, NOT THROUGH HIS OWN SIN, BUT THROUGH TAKING MY SIN AND YOUR SIN. AND BECAUSE OF THAT, HIS HOLY FATHER SEPARATED AND WITHDREW, FORSOOK HIM, BECAUSE THAT'S WHAT YOU AND I DESERVED. WE DESERVE TO BE FORSAKEN. BUT GOD TOOK HIS WRATH AND HIS REJECTION OF MANKIND THAT WAS JUST AND HOLY. THAT WAS A RIGHT RESPONSE. AND HE PUT IT ON JESUS AND REJECTED HIS OWN SON AND FORSOOK HIS OWN SON AND LET HIS OWN SON DIE SO THAT YOU AND I COULD HAVE OUR PRICE PAID. WE OWED A DEBT THAT WE COULDN'T PAY. AND JESUS PAID A DEBT THAT HE DIDN'T KNOW. HE TOOK OUR DEBT UPON HIMSELF, AND HE PAID FOR THIS. AND THE RESULT OF IT IS, IT SAYS THAT WE MIGHT BE MADE THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD IN HIM. IF YOU UNDERSTAND THAT JESUS PAID THE DEBT THAT WE OWED, AND NOW HE IS OFFERING US RIGHTEOUSNESS, RIGHT STANDING WITH GOD, NOT BASED ON THE FACT THAT YOU'VE EARNED IT, THAT YOU DESERVE IT. IT'S A GIFT. IF YOU UNDERSTAND THAT, WELL THEN, MAN, YOU COULD LIVE LIKE THE WAR IS OVER. LIKE THE WRATH OF GOD ISN'T ON YOU ANYMORE. THE PRICE HAS BEEN PAID. GOD ISN'T ANGRY AT YOU ANYMORE. GOD LOVES YOU. GOD WANTS TO RELEASE HIS GOODNESS TOWARDS YOU, BUT IT IS ALL DEPENDENT UPON ARE YOU TRUSTING JESUS AND WHAT HE DID FOR YOU, OR ARE YOU TRUSTING WHAT YOU DO FOR HIM? ARE YOU TRYING TO EARN GOD'S FAVOR? YOU MIGHT DO A BETTER JOB AT IT THAN I AM, BUT NOBODY IS EVER GOING TO BE GOOD ENOUGH TO EARN GOD'S FORGIVENESS AND MERCY. YOU JUST HAVE TO HUMBLE YOURSELF AND RECEIVE IT AS A GIFT. IT SAYS THAT HE HATH MADE HIM TO BE SIN FOR US WHO KNEW NO SIN, THAT WE MIGHT BE MADE THE RIGHTEOUSNESS OF GOD IN HIM. THAT IS A GIFT TO BE RECEIVED, NOT A WAGE TO BE EARNED. YOU HAVE TO QUIT TRUSTING IN YOURSELF. AND THIS IS THE GOOD NEWS THAT GOD HAS PAID FOR ALL OF YOUR SINS. THE PAYMENT FOR OUR TRANSGRESSIONS AGAINST GOD HAVE BEEN PLACED UPON JESUS, AND IF YOU WILL RECEIVE IT, NOW THERE IS NO WRATH FROM GOD. THE WAR IS OVER. HIS PUNISHMENT, him, HIS IMPUTING, IMPUTATION OF SIN TOWARDS YOU IS OVER. HE PUT ALL OF YOUR SIN UPON JESUS, AND IT'S JUST A MATTER OF WILL YOU RECEIVE IT. HEEFT DEZE UITZENDING JE AANGESPROKEN? EN VERLANG JE NAAR MEER? Het levensveranderende onderwijs van Andrew Wommack is ook beschikbaar via onze website. Je vindt hier veel naar het Nederlands vertaalde boeken, dvd's en meer. Er zijn ook veel Nederlands ondertitelde video's beschikbaar op ons YouTube-kanaal. Kijk op andrewwommack.nl